The Unshackled Waves, episode 216. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company for another Waves premiere. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, we have enabled Super Chat starting from this episode, so if you like what you're seeing throughout the show, please give us a Super Chat, as it is another way you can support the Unshackled and the production of this show. Today, we are going to be discussing what was the biggest media controversy of the past week. This occurred on Network 10's Studio 10 program, where permanent panellist and TV Logie Hall of Fame recipient Kerry ann Kenley suggested that Invasion Day protesters should better focus their activism on stopping rape in remote Aboriginal communities. For this, she was labelled a racist by fill-in panellist Yumi Steins, and from that, the usual leftist outrage brigade and Aboriginal activists have piled on to label Kerry ann a racist. Kerry ann stood by her comments, rejecting what she, she was saying was racist, while Yumi Steins is now in hiding. The controversy has again raised the question about whether we can have a serious discussion about Aboriginal welfare in this country without the racist this label being thrown about. To discuss this issue, my guest today is Dr. Anthony Dillon. He is proud of both his Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal ancestry and is a researcher in the areas of mental health and Aboriginal well-being. He lectures to university students and different community groups on Aboriginal issues and well-being. He is also active as a social commentator on Aboriginal issues, having several thought-provoking articles published in the Australian newspaper, The Conversation and the ABC Drum Online. And he joins me now. Anthony, welcome. You're welcome. Now, this media controversy was born out of the, the annual Australia Day debate uh, that we have every January in the in the lead up. Now, mm -hmm. you were a voice, quite rightly, pointing out that there are more pressing issues facing Indigenous Australians than the symbolic Change the Date campaign. But I first wanted to ask you, you personally, what does Australia Day represent to you? To me, it represents what a great country we're celebrating what a great country Australia is and obviously January 26 is chosen because that is when Governor Arthur Phillip landed at, at Botany Bay uh, that is the event we're commemorating that specific event you consider that a positive thing well, well some are commemor commemorating that event I I'm just commemorating oh just celebrating what a great day Australia is just like for many people on the 25th of December some may be celebrating the birth of their saviour. For others, it's just a, a time to celebrate coming together with family. So the the date, are you, are you saying that the, the date is irrelevant, but it's important we have an Australia Day? Yeah, it's important that we have a, an Australia Day. I'm not tied to a particular date. Um, <clears throat> so therefore, <clears throat> when I say that, you might say, well, then why do I oppose changing the date if I'm not tied to a date and I'm, I'm opposed to changing the date if it's done on the grounds of you've got a, a bunch of Aboriginal people claiming I'm upset because of the celebrations on that date therefore change it and if you change it all you do is reinforce the myth that it was the date that caused them to be upset which is nonsense does that make sense yeah, yeah, it does. You're not committed to the date, but people are wanting to change the date for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reason, yeah. Um, and I certainly don't want to reinforce the myth that people are, are upset by a date. And if we did change it, you know, if we gave in because, oh, so many protesters want it changed, it would, um, it would send them the message that, hey, the date was causing you to be upset. And they would think, gee, we really, the date really must be upsetting for us or else the government wouldn't have changed it. Now obviously this Australia Day debate it's talked about throughout the media all, all throughout January and it made its way onto morning uh, television last Monday morning when when Carrie Ann Kenley most people consider well, consider her just a person who interviews and celebrities and that but she's actually quite a uh, quite a good interviewer well articulated person and she talked about the the invasion day protesters saying that 
you're you're protesting wanting this date change, but you're not paying attention to the fact that there are indigenous women, children uh, being raped. Uh, uh, what have you we done about it? And this was actually a very well informed comment. She she'd done her research on it. The statistic that um, was brought up to confer uh, Carrie Ann's assertion here is that it was actually first put forward by Marsha Langton and the ABC did a fact check on it that Indigenous women are 34 to 80 times more likely to face uh, domestic violence. Yes. I mean, I, I don't even bother memorising the statistics. Uh, I mean, there's many sources out there that cross-reference each other, cross-validate each other. So. You know, we know that it's a lot higher. Um, the rates of abuse are a lot higher. And one of the important things I want to make about what Carrie Ann did, um, all the people, um, you know, the fans of Yumi, the victim grade, victim brigade people, the, the offenderati, the Winja ninjas, whatever you want to call them, they all, you know, they parrot back to each other in their echo chamber, the same arguments. Um, and, you know, one of those arguments being that what Kerry Ann did was a diversion. It was off topic, off topic. Yeah, and this is what Lydia Thorpe uh, said the next day on yep. Studio 10 and also with on 3AW with Neil Mitchell. Um, she's a perfect parrot. The two are highly related because presumably the people who are protesting are protesting because they think what they're doing is somehow going to help Aboriginal people. They're not just out there to get a suntan. They're out there protesting because they think by changing Australia Day, it'll help Aboriginal people. And basically, Kerry Ann is saying, no, it won't help them. If you really want to help Aboriginal people, these are the sorts of things you should be focusing on. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go out to a com um, community yourself um to do something about the issue but i think her point about the people going out to the community or not going out to the community was if they did go out to the community they may, may have a change of heart they may swap their no pride in genocide abolish australia day banners for stop the violence so that was her point there because um and you had some idiots saying well has she gone to a community? Maybe she, she should go to a community? No, she doesn't have to because she's under no illusion what the big problems are. Well, she said she was happy to. She was challenged sure, yeah. uh, go to the community and said, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, sure. But there were some people who tried to invalidate her claims because she hasn't been out to the, re the remote communities. Again, she, you know, if she wants to, that's great, but she doesn't have to in order for her argument to be valid. She knows, like a lot of us, the horrific problems. And, you know, you, you saw it summarised in that fact check on ABC. But apparently that, that has slipped the attention of the Australia Day protesters. And for Yumi Steins to basically inject into the discussion to cry racism, it was the, the cheapest way to dismiss Carrie Ann's views, basically saying, oh, well, you're sounding racist, so we shouldn't listen to, to uh, what you're saying. And she also uh, disputed the fact that it was true, even though we've just been through the statistics. And she also tried to attack Carrie Ann, saying that, oh, you don't know that the the Invasion Day protesters don't care about that issue. But we've we've seen this play out before where the, the, the left and these uh, various Aboriginal activists, they're, they're more outraged at somebody pointing out the problems in Aboriginal communities than actually doing anything a, a about the, the said problems and facts of them themselves. Yeah, and again, you know, people, as they said to Kerry Ann, well, how do you know that they, those people aren't doing something to help? Well, uh, I guess we don't, we're not 100% sure. However, we can be pretty confident given that, when was the last time you saw a large protest the size of an Australia Day protest or even the 10th of the size of Australia Day protest where they were protesting against the violence in Aboriginal communities? Have you seen any? 
Yeah, or well, there was a previous controversy with Prue McSween, who was a contributor to Channel 7 Sunrise, uh, when they yeah. had a Hot Topic segment about uh, removing Indigenous children who were at risk and potentially settling them with white uh, families. And uh, there was a protest outside the Channel 7 Sunrise studio, and there was, well, there was actually two. There was one when they were out on the beach at the Commonwealth Games, and their, their set was... Uh, invaded and there was a, a really good photoshop um, shared by uh, Jacinta Price on her Facebook profile last yeah. night where she uh, uh, replaced these uh, invasion well, day banners with someone did it someone did it yeah she, oh, yeah she she posted it saying why why aren't these posters saying we need to stop child sexual abuse domestic violence in indigenous communities and it was a perfectly good point I'll tell you why they, they're not interested. Albert Einstein said the ears won't hear what the heart can't accept. The hearts will not accept that there's big problems in Aboriginal communities, uh, therefore the ears won't hear it. Now, uh, Yumi Steins, now I've had a lot to say about her uh, uh, the past week. I consider her personally one of the, the lowest form of media personality. She thrives on publicity, getting a name out there. Uh, but then when she throws grenades in, plays the, the victim. Uh, she, she, of course, hosted that documentary, Is Australia Sexist?, which employed a lot of publicity stunts to try and prove the hypothesis. But yeah, she she said she didn't turn up the next day saying, oh, I just wanted to uh, want to lie in bed. Oh, I don't feel like going in. Oh, but it has nothing to do with uh, what uh, happened uh, yesterday between me and Carrie Ann. And uh, Carrie Ann, obviously, uh, she, she said that that <laughs> was quite a lame excuse for, for not showing up. And uh, Carrie Ann, like I said, uh, she stood by her comments. She turned up the, the next day. She went head to head with Lydia Thorpe. And then there was the thing where said about Carrie Ann that she wasn't allowed to, to comment on this topic and unless she understood her, her white privilege. And this is the thing that's always irritated me about this debate, that you can't have an opinion on the welfare of another human being because they're a different skin color. That's racism. Well, yeah, and again, that, that's that's not a law or a truth or a rule. It's just simply an assertion, an excuse given by, again, the Victim Brigade, the Politically Correct, the Muppets, uh, the Social Justice Warriors, uh, the Windy Ninjas, the Offenderati. They will try and silence you. Um, so let me make this perfectly clear to Lydia and all the others. In this country, Aboriginal Affairs is everyone's business and no one needs your permission to talk about it, to do something about it, to have an opinion about it. And their opinion is just as valid as yours. Yes, that's that's exactly right. Black, whether you're black or white. And uh, Jacinta Price, she's been campaigning on this issue of Indigenous violence and sexual abuse uh, for a number of years uh, yeah. now, and she, she's copped it regularly online. I remember when I published an, an article uh, about her, it was a few years ago now, we got uh, these messages to our Facebook page and in our contact form saying all sorts of slanderous things about her and it just amazed me that this is the sort of reaction sh uh, sh she provokes and I've heard you speak previously about just you know you have a admiration for her because she is out in in the communities like she sees all this firsthand and yeah. like she has cop threats in her personal life and you're very very aware that you're a city-based academic so you're not always there no uh, and uh, I don't apologize for that. I, I don't pretend to be there. I'm in the city like you and I have an opinion um, And I, I, I shout it enough times and you know occasionally, occasionally the media pick up on it and you know for all those you know people like Lydia and Yumi and um, I won't name the others and you know in case there's a, a lawsuit coming my way <laughs> that have tried to downplay or deny this problem You've got the same opportunities as me to make a platform. So if you think it's not a big problem, make a platform, shout it enough times, but be prepared to be challenged. Another argument that Lydia Thorpe made is that we need to have a treaty before oh, we can oh. we, we, we can talk about this. So, you know, that's the, the biggest load of wombat shit. That is holding Aboriginal people back. It's telling them that, 
hey, you, you can't get ahead in life. Uh, you can't have the same sorts of opportunities as you and I have until we have this treaty. And she goes one further, even worse, you know, to talk about we, we have to acknowledge the past. We have to talk about this past, blah, blah, blah. Look, I'm all for talking about the past, but don't make that a condition for there to be advancement and moving forward. Because many, many Aboriginal people are and have moved forward. And it's not going to... Uh... People like Lydia Thorpe say it's going to be a magic wand. If we have this treaty, then all of the problems will just solve themselves. And I think uh, it'll make problems worse. It'll make problems worse. And as we were talking about before, the reason you're against changing the date is because the the people driving this uh, they don't have good just intentions. Come to, just come back to the treaty for a moment. Mm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you know if we do get it. Like I wouldn't be surprised if we do get it. And if we do get it there's going to be some money handed out and that's going to create a lot of problems wait and see and yeah a treaty is not going to be the the last demand and the the, the point that i was making before is that we've, we've seen the uh, change the date campaign now it's abolish the date uh because they already think they're on the winning side of changing the date they say no we shouldn't have an australia day because we have nothing to be proud of and then uh, we have the abolish australia people i mean last australia day in 2018 there was the uh invasion day organizer tiny Ernest williams who felt that she yeah. could say at the front of the steps of victoria's parliament fuck australia i hope it burns to the ground yeah i mean look i respect her right to say that but uh, a couple of things she needs her and you know her, her um puppet people can expect to be challenged but the other thing to consider there there is an enormous amount of goodwill by non-indigenous not aboriginal australians towards aboriginal australians um in fact i think they're more likely to be treated better by non-aboriginal australians um than they are by each other don't think that goodwill will last forever or it might, might last a while but don't be surprised if it's going to be taxed sometimes um you know many aussies will only take so much being told that they're evil and guilty because they're white and that sort of thing so people who want to you know promote that message f australia burn australia uh genocide solar land or whatever just be careful not every aussie is going to be tolerant and you just want to hope that when you need a helping hand, you know, whether it be you're stuck on the side of the road or you need a health service or something, the person who would ordinarily help you uh, isn't someone that's been uh, um, affected by the constant rant of you're white, you're evil. So you don't feel that you're missing out on any white privilege in your daily life? No, uh, um, you mean, am I affected? Yeah. By by someone else's white privilege yeah no <laughs> you know whatever this white privilege may be no i don't see it holding me back and even many other people from other aboriginal people or other nationalities who have um a lot more black privilege or black disadvantage whatever you want to call it blackness i don't hear them crying about it either they just get on with life. They love Australia. Australia is a pretty good country. It's imperfect. Got a lot of things to fix, but it's a damn good country. Now, just because you have Aboriginal ancestry doesn't mean that you're immune from being attacked uh, from the left. You wrote in response to this uh, controversy for, for Liberty Works that if you're white, you're called racist if you mention these things if you're a black fella you're called a, a sellout and obviously you've got <laughs> some of the, some of this and as we were mentioning before jacinta price because she is so prominent uh she's copped this for years there's been some terrible uh things uh, oh. said about her and of course she got banned from from facebook for 24 hours it was overturned for sharing some of this and it was and, and this is whether the feminists won't uh, defend her she was copying sexual abuse threats and yet the the, the feminists the so-called clementine fords weren't defending her yeah you know double standards now i just i don't know if you have access to your um 
email there or, or your your Facebook Messenger. Yeah, I'll just bring it up now. I I, I would recommend not showing it on what we're telecasting here, but yeah, have you got that? Yeah, I've got that, and that is not a yeah. That, that um that was posted on a page just a couple of hours ago, you know. And someone's gone to the effort to basically create that, thinking that it's an intelligent point of political discourse. Yeah, to you know, to slander myself and uh, let, let, let's name the other people, uh, Bess and Jacinta and Warren. Uh, how frightened are these people? Why, instead of developing a meme, why not develop an argument? Why not develop a response to what it is we say? This me mocking it makes them feel that they're they're doing good that and and this is basically the leftist activists in a nutshell that they want they feel that virtue signaling is achieving something showing their their moral character and i always make the point that these people who claim that they're the more caring compassionate people i mean they dish out this online abuse i mean they're often the most uncaring intolerant people you can come across oh, exactly and i mean a, a similar theme those who who claim to oppose racism and prejudice so much as you could see in that meme uh, if that's not prejudice what is mm. uh, um i mean they're the ones uh, you know basically uh, i think shakespeare said it well they they protesteth too much now, overall, I think that what the result of this media controversy is that Yumi Steins, not only sh did she not turn up to Studio 10 the next day as she was scheduled, she's now in hiding, she's, she's playing the victim, she hasn't got the courage to stand by her argument, and thankfully Carrie Ann and her co-hosts at Studio 10 have, have stood their ground, so has Network 10, there was that quick mob protest outside uh, Network 10, which they demanded demanded they sack a Carrie Ann KKK yeah. Kenley, uh, but uh, all the advertisers have stood by Network 10. It seems that Carrie Ann, uh, she has persevered through this, and I think it shows we can still have these discussions, despite all this hysteria. Organisations such as Sleeping Giants, who try to organise boycotts, uh, they didn't have much of an impact with this. And I think there's been a lot of rallying around Carrie Ann. I mean, she is a TV legend, and I, I, I think that this has really showed that yes, Australia, we still are, we still can discuss the important, sensitive, sometimes uh, uncomfortable issues. Yeah, look, we can we can discuss them, but not in a manner that I think is ideal. Mm. Uh, as just obviously, look, the past week uh, it would have been oh, 30, 40, 50 people. I've asked a simple, direct question. Please tell me what it was she said that was racist, and no one's been able to give a a straight answer. So you know, it's it's just pathetic. Well, the the argument that's put forward is that by talking about these bad things that are happening in indigenous communities you're saying that indigenous people are bad people let me pick up on that because you just reminded me of something i want uh, i want to say there's plenty of stats on this you know they're published stats and as we saw on the the q a fact find you know fact check with with marcia these have been said before brooke boney or bonnie or however you pronounce her name boney the channel nine aboriginal Yes, uh, yes. Said a similar thing, you know, her sister's more likely to be raped. We've known that plenty of people have said this. Carrie Ann says it. And the reason why it got so much attention and backlash was because Yumi followed up with her stupid statement. Now, another interesting thing, and, you know, people then said, oh, you're generalizing. No, you're not generalizing. You're just stating a fact. And I like to use the example, the rate of diabetes is very high amongst the Aboriginal people. Okay? Report after report shows that. You can talk about that, and yet no one will ever say, how dare you say that about us? How dare you single us out? No, it's just stating a fact that no one really cares. But when it comes to the topic of abuse, like I said, Einstein said, the ears won't hear what the heart can't accept. That's a topic which people do not want to talk about. It's not only an elephant in the room, it's a dinosaur in the room. And we're not mentioning these, well, they are facts. They, they are things that are happening. 
we're not raising them to say they're to point out that look they're they're bad people we're saying it because we want to draw attention to the issue to help and prevent this where we're coming up from it from a position of care that this is no matter what race uh, this happens to it's horrific and it shouldn't happen in Australia and surely we've got to discuss it how unpleasant it is and try and look at ways to stop it yeah and when you have it happening at high rates like diabetes when it's happening at far higher rates than it is in the general population we've got to take notice um you know, the other thing too carry in and all these reports that talk about the higher rates no one is saying every aboriginal man is a perpetrator i saw one you know really soft in the head aboriginal ex-sportsman talk about he felt profiled yes as, as an abuser what a load of nonsense uh, again when we talk about the high rate of diabetes does that mean he feels profiled as a person with diabetes i doubt it and no one is saying that every aboriginal woman is being abused or raped because i saw on facebook the, you know for the next couple of days you had people trying to be funny saying just wanted to let you know that i wasn't raped last night carrie ann i wasn't raped at last night well carrie ann wasn't saying you were going to be she's just pointed out that these things are happening and she was just you know basically saying that off the back of well-established information we have out there and i recall that uh, jacinta price she also brought up this fact saying that by claiming that you're you're profiling me you're you're basically singling it out making it all about yourself you're you're not yeah. not talking about you specifically it's talking about events that are that are occurring it's 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 not meant to be a a stigma that's not what it's about no i mean look it's the same as if you were to talk about you know most of the people in jail are male most of the sex offenders a male as a male i have no problem hearing that um i don't sort of back down and think oh god i don't want to hear this i'm the first one to admit that in the male species there's a lot of jerks and you know i have no i'm not one of them i have no shame um so i'm not afraid to say yep a lot of the problems caused in society are due to men just being stupid yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you could make a whole nother show about uh gender politics yeah. And that's again well identity politics i do not build my identity around my maleness i'm from queensland if, if there was a huge scandal in queensland i would have no problem talking about it. if there was a huge scandal in my family i would have no problem talking about it when there's a huge problem in the aboriginal population such as violence child abuse alcohol abuse those sorts of things i have no problem talking about it because I do not build my identity around being Aboriginal. Therefore, if that problem is spoken about, I don't feel as if I'm personally being knocked. So these people who are getting upset, you know, a lot of them, they probably build their life around being Aboriginal. And it's funny, we could talk about this one maybe for another show, but when you look at these protesters and you look at the colour of them, you know what I'm going to say, and I'm not going to say it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we know uh, what let's you're going say, to say, and of course we know what's happened to people who've said that. Let's, let's save it for another time. Now, obviously we have a federal election this year, and in my opinion, I think the Labour Party is going to win. Bill Shorten will be Prime Minister, and of course we've seen this constitutional recognition uh, debate. You wrote a chapter in the, the book, uh, Recognise What, questioning the, the value of constitutional recognition, uh, but because it was a bipartisan policy, now we've had the, the Uluru statement from the heart, uh, and this is what we were talking about before, that demands continue to increase from the left, and now they want an Indigenous voice uh, to parliament so are you concerned that indigenous policy the focus will be all wrong and we'll, we'll see what we've been talking about the past week which are the real issues be sidelined look it's problematic on a number of levels i won't talk at length on it but who are going to be these people who are going to be the voices you can be pretty sure that whoever they are while there might be a celebration for a few minutes those people are going to be hated eventually by their own and they'll find out all about Aboriginal politics because they will be expected to fix every problem 
going to be able to. They're not going to be able to. I mean, they may want to, but they'll find that no matter what the policies are, no matter what the funding are, you know, people on the ground have got to start making changes themselves. And that's hard to get people to do that. And of course, there has been some commentary that a Labor government would look at changing the date. They haven't said at the at the moment, but they've been captured by the, the far left progressive base of their party. And so we could see that. And pe people are right when you say you change the government, you change the country. This, this could be when we see serious pressure on a government. The Morrison government has been quite determined to keep Australia Day, but when we, we could see some watering down of the significance of the day at the very least. Yeah, look, if it, if it changes and it brings good, I will be the first person to say I was wrong. We should have changed it a long time ago. But if it brings no good, you know, it's like the like Rudd's apology, which, which I don't dismiss. But if we change the date and it's brought no change, I'll then be saying, OK, we've tried it. Can we please get on with the real business? Well, like, like we've talked about, these uh, symbolic things, they've, there's been a, a hug, but then we're still facing the, the same problems. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Um, I just thought of something. Can I go back yep. to something? Yeah. That meme I sent you, mm. Imagine if that was generated by non-Aboriginal people. Oh, well, it probably Imagine was. Um, well, it could have been. <laughs> yeah, could have, yeah, but um, they did put their, put their name to it. But well, the person who I received it from, who used it to attack me, was um, Aboriginal. But, you know, if, if an identified non-Aboriginal person was found to be the person who created it, they'd be in, in a bit of trouble, I think, mm. with current rules. Yeah, oh, well, if they're from the left, then the, the rules yeah. are a, a bit different. Well, Anthony, I've appreciated you coming on the show today and continuing to, to fight the good fight uh, in the media. You, you put yourself out there, you're your own man, you you don't like identity politics, you just tell tell it how you see it and look to the, to the real issues. So I certainly appreciate your work. Oh, thank you very much for having me and sorry for sidetracking on this. No, I think we, we we were a bit sporadic throughout the whole show, but I think we covered everything at the end, so it all came together well in the end. Thank you. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Now, an update on the upcoming tours. The Deplorables tour has been delayed again and is now scheduled to be in March. This is due to visa trouble for all three speakers, Gavin McGuinness, Tommy Robinson and Milo Yiannopoulos. Existing tickets will still be honoured and refunds will be issued if a so-called Liberal government, who say they believe in free speech, decides to deny the visas. You can still get some tickets in your city for Dr. Jordan P. Peterson's return to Australia with special guest Dave Rubin. And in March, we have Dr. Stephen Hicks's first visit to Australia hosted by True Arrow Events. Then in late March, we have the Conversation About Feminism Tour featuring bad feminist Roxane Gay and factual feminist Christina Hoff Summers, which should prove to be a lively debate. It is being hosted by This Is 42. And I am also pleased to confirm that The Unshackled will be a sponsor of the first Liberty Fest in Perth, organised by our good friends at Liberty Works. It is on the 8th and 9th of March, and you can book your place by going to libertyfest.org.au. Remember that The Unshackled can only continue and expand with the support of our followers. There are plenty of ways to support us. You can pledge over at Patreon at patreon.com slash theunshackled, and directly via our PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash theunshackled. We also have our premium membership option on our website which is the unshackled.net slash support options slash premium membership and of course we have our online store uprightmarket.com which also helps to support the unshackled so thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next show thanks for tuning in to the unshackled waves please visit the unshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show don't forget to pick up your free ebook at the unshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out the unshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.